Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today, well, we're gonna be working on an iron golem farm and messing around with some more power. So I hope you guys are ready. So hopping in our world today, we are gonna be setting up an iron golem farm. You can see I am up top, right above our base. This is gonna provide a perfect place for this, I think. Um, so to set it up, we are going to need to go about 20 or so blocks up in the air. So a good way to count blocks is just to place the blocks in your inventory, and that should be perfectly fine. Uh, I'm going to go about 22 blocks just to be on the safe side. So to build this fantastic farm, the main goal with this farm, is, or the main point, is to get your villagers out far enough, have a zombie here, and as long as it's within range, which I think is seven blocks, they can actually get scared and they talk to each other. And whenever they gossip um, to each other, there's a chance for a uh, iron golem to spawn. Um, so with us having two going, this will be a lot faster. So right here, I have one, two, three, four blocks away from the main block. And then this is where we're going to place our bed. So a bed is going to go here. And then we're going to have a bed that goes here and a bed that goes here. And we're going to repeat this same thing on the other side. So to sort of get this uh, thing almost done, like the, the bottom area down here, all we have to do is place some signs just like this. And then we're gonna place the signs on one another. Um, and then we're gonna place signs on top of these. This is sort of gonna prevent the water from uh, interacting here. So this is gonna make this super convenient because we won't even have to worry about this. We can just kind of leave it and we don't have to visit it over and over again. We can just have this chest pick up everything and just take it exactly where it needs to go. So let's go ahead and place this in your chest. On top of that, I'm gonna place an ender hopper. This is just going to vacuum up the items that just end up getting filled up down here. Um, let's see, I do have my backpack. Let's see, what item would I want to use to fill in the holes down here? Hmm. We have dry ice, I don't think that's gonna be good. I'm gonna use mossy stone here, just for the, the platform for which these iron golems are gonna end up landing. And that's gonna work, right? Yeah, the lava is gonna be right above their head and everything's gonna land right in here. Like, this is gonna actually be perfect. And we can access this chest from anywhere. Like this chest can just set right here and we're good to go. All I gotta do is place the lava in, if I can get down in here to do that. Let's see, place the lava right there. Perfect. Place the water in all four corners. So we place water there. Here, and this is this will end up being the the pusher that pushes these iron golems right where we want them. <laughs> I really like the uh, the inner chest. Like I wish that was something that like vanilla sort of had was some sort of like e chest or some kind of chest that you could put that you could hopper into. Oh, that'd be so nice. So let's go ahead and get this area constructed here. So we are going to have beds that are placed like well not like that. That's wrong. <laughs> let's place them like this. Wait, that's, that's wrong as well. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to make another bed because that one's going to get just turned to a crisp. So yeah, beds like this. We're going to set them up just like so. Of course, I need another bed already. Let's see. Bed. And a bed here. I'm missing the bed. The other bed. Now to build this thing, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to have a block here in the middle. We're going to place a trap door. That trap door is going to be waterlogged later on. Um, and then behind it, we're going to have a composter that is going to go back here. Um, it sort of goes like on this block that they're like floating on almost like go. I think it goes up one more actually. Yeah, we need to fix that. It actually goes on the back of the trap door basically. So on the back of the trap door, there we go. Um, and then you can put a block uh, above it or whatever. Uh, basically, you just want to prevent uh, mobs from spawning. So having this block here is going to be just fine having it right there. Uh, basically, that's just to prevent mobs from spawning. I actually like to build a platform um, above this whole thing just to sort of prevent anything from really spawning on these beds. Um, that's usually a good idea. So we also need other workstations above the beds. Um, and then I have found that uh, having blocks that are unspawnable right here kind of helps as well. But we'll talk about that later. If we have that problem, we can, of course, fix it. Uh, but let's go ahead and get the slabs built out. This is sort of how this farm runs. It's kind of interesting. So we're going to have a slab that is right here. Let's go ahead and break this. And then we're going to have a trap door. 
And the trap door is going to go right here. Sort of similar to this one. It's going to go right there. Um, and then on top of that is going to be a carpet. This is basically going to allow them to bob up and down. And so when we put water here, they're going to bob up and down. And they're going to be looking at that zombie. Or be able to see that zombie that's in there. So once you get both sides done, they should look exactly the same. Now, I did raise this up one block because I did realize it was going to need to go up one. Uh, basically, if we're setting here, we're going to be bobbing. And you can see the villager is actually going to be bobbing as well inside here. So these guys are going to be bouncing back and forth. And eventually, they will gossip and get scared and blah, blah, you know. And after, you know, a little while, they will actually spawn an iron golem, which will, it will spawn up here. Um, now, I don't have this fully set up yet, but basically, we're going to have this set up where we have a fence that is going to run along the line just like this. Um, I don't think you have to have one setting out one, but just like that, five... And then same on the other side. This is basically going to prevent them from walking this way. And then we're going to do trap doors. Or not trap doors, sorry. We're going to do fence gates. And these fence gates, well, they're kind of a... They're a little bit harder to mess with. Um, let's see. Can I... I need to place it... This is so goofy to place. Basically, we're going to need to place it out here. I guess if I do this... That makes it a little bit easier to place. There we go. So yeah, we're going to place these on the outside and basically just have them open. Um, and that will allow them to walk right through, but also prevent the water from walking off the edge. Water walking off the edge. What? what is that even a thing? So the only hard part, I think, is going to be getting these villagers to go where I want them to go. If I spawn them, you can see it doesn't like want to spawn them right where I want them to go, which that's where I want them to go. So good good that it went in there, but I'm going to try and get it to spawn on this platform. And as you can see, they bobble. Um, I have to get that done for all six of the villagers. Three per stall area. So it shouldn't be too difficult. Just a little bit of flying back and forth. Oh, yeah. We're going to we're gonna get these guys going, and they're all going to be ready to go before we know it. Now, you do want to probably get it done before a night of sleep, um, because... They do need to definitely sleep before you start putting the zombie in there because you don't want them to be restless. So I do need to capture myself a zombie, but we should probably buy a name tag first. So that way we can name this bad boy. Now I have this anvil. I am going to name it exactly what I said. <laughs> bad boy. <laughs> All right. So we got bad boy ready to go. Uh, all we got to do is wait for nighttime. Well, I guess that's where this beautiful hammock comes in handy. Well, I guess we have to wait for morning to end, don't we? Yeah, these guys have definitely slept. Now, I do want to check. Are they still in their chamber after sleeping? It looks like they are. So they're doing great. Perfect. So that that means it is working in its current configuration. No need to modify it. Um, so long as we can get this zombie inside that hole, which that's going to be the hard part. Getting it inside that hole there and to actually get it to land itself in that center area, which is more of a pain than anything. Perfect. Here is our zombie. Let's go ahead and name tag it, bad boy. Pick it up, and we are ready to go. Now, um, I have a little bit of time, I guess. I should probably grab a couple of things. I need, a, uh, I guess, a couple slabs, so that way I prevent this guy from burning when it's daylight. Or just some cobble, something. Anything would work. Some cobblestone, I think that'll be fine. Um, but we need to get this guy directly in the center of this. Now, this is going to be pretty difficult. And then I also don't want these guys to be able to see that there's a zombie here. Otherwise, we're going to have a problem on our hands with an iron golem spawning. Okay, so can I get you in here? How am I touching you without you even noticing I'm here? Wait, did you... You fell right in. <gasps> okay, if I block that, I need some trap doors, and I need them now. Oh, he fell right in, like, perfectly. That never happens. Oh, I need a trap door quick. Okay. Trap door. Because it, like, it didn't even seem like it was aware or anything of what was going on. Doesn't know that it's about to be as, about to be a pawn in our little scheme here. Let me see if I can't get myself a little landing zone. Okay, so... I need to break this and immediately place a trapdoor. 
there we go. I think that's it. Like, it cannot move anywhere. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Pretty sure it's stuck. Yeah, I don't think it can go anywhere. So what should happen is these guys start to freak out. And Iron Golem should start to spawn. Before we know it. Of course, I do want to probably break this. <laughs> Hopefully we get Iron Golems to spawn. Uh, I may have to wait till the next day, but hey. Avoid the lava. And let's get some buckets of water. I think I only need, what, two buckets to do this? I'll go ahead and use three just in case. Is there an iron? Oh, there's already iron golems up here. Look at that. Perfect. Now, what I need to do is I need to place water, like, right on each other. So one here and one here. And then that other bucket of water I need to get in my inventory. And I can place it right here then i have an infinite water source right here so then i can place water here pick it up place water here place water here pretty much creating a channel that is going in two different directions that should work i think that is completed yes it is perfect now we can get out of here because what should happen is the Iron Golem should fall down in here. As you see. They land at the bottom. They die. After a while, they die. I promise they do die. It died. And now what we should have is iron and uh, poppies that are going to be building up inside this chest. But of course, I don't want them to build up here. I want them to go into our refined storage system. So, with our other ender chest, let's just make sure. Yes, everything is in there, including the iron and the poppies already. And of course, this is only going to continue to get better. What are you doing, zombie? Get out of here. Get, how does this got acquisition catches things on fire? What, what in the world? So, as you can see, I went ahead and made myself an importer and I made a little bit of a room up here. Now, what I'm going to do is this is going to be completely different. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Also, our power node is going to get removed, and I'm going to go ahead and take my controller. Um, and that is all going to be put upstairs here. Uh, so I'm going to have my controller that is going to kind of be floating up in the air. I'm going to bring my cables up, though. Oh, as you can see, no power. We don't have anything. Bring the cable up. There we go. Till the cable is here. Um, what I'm going to do is place the controller. Of course, the controller still needs to receive some sort of power. But we do have the ability to add some stuff to it while it's up here in this room. For one, is going to be something that I've been really wanting to get set up, which is going to be this right here, a wireless transmitter. That is going to be fantastic so we can make ourselves a wireless crafting grid. Um, so we can have some portable access. But one of the other cool things is I can now take this guy right here. Let's go ahead and break it. There we go. And we can actually hook this directly in to here and have it uh, automatically go inside. So that way we'll pretty much have an infinite supply of iron uh, so long as our iron farm continues to run. So if I place this here and I hook this in, slowly but surely all of the contents of this ender chest is gonna go in here. Not only would I wanna use this um, for you know the iron farm, I can use this for anything that we want to get into our refined storage system. Um, so that is going to work. Now, I was talking about getting this going, right? So, Let's go ahead and talk about that. By the way, I would love to use like some other glass. I know there's like reactor glass and stuff, but you know, this works for now. Um, it, it gets the job done. I'm using it down here as well. It's not my favorite glass, but hey, it, it's working, right? It's somewhat working. So to get this going, we're definitely going to need a crafting grid. Wow, if I can talk today. Um, I have some processors that have been processing. Wow, that's so weird to say. But I'm gonna be making this right here, a wireless crafting grid. So that's one thing that is done. Um, now, I'm also going to need my wireless uh, transmitter, and then we also need to focus on this. So we actually need a few of these. Hopefully, I have enough quartz. Otherwise, I got to go to the nether, which isn't going to be too bad now that we have flight. But this right here is going to require four of these. I'm going to need one, two, three, four. There we go. And uh, then these need ender pearls on them. 
and these are going to be our range upgrades. Um, so we pretty much have everything we need to make this wireless. The only thing left to do is to make sure we have some wireless charging. As soon as we put it in our inventory, you can see that things charged up, which is perfect. Now let's head up here and get this thing set up. So all I'm going to do is place this wireless transmitter on the top. If I go right here. I can place that. And then I need to drop in my range upgrades. And then on my wireless crafting grid, shift right click on there. And now I can access this from anywhere. Not only that, you can have it stored in your inventory. We can go into the options and in controls and under refined storage. Actually, it's not under refined storage. This is a different mod, I believe, that adds this. So refined storage add-ons. So we go into options, controls, add-ons, and then open wireless crafting grid. I like to set this to F. And then anything that is using F, like swap with offhand, I like to remove that. Honestly, swap with offhand ends up becoming such a pain anyways. So now every time I hit F, my crafting grid opens up. And of course you can still open it up and everything and have all of this at your disposal. Um, now I think the only downside is this is not gonna charge unless it's in your inventory. Um, so having it out of your inventory is not gonna really work. But hey, it's really nice. We can be down here now working on stuff and we can hit F and go, hey, I need some iron, for example. So I'm gonna pull out some iron. I need some gold and I need to work on leveling this thing up. And it's it's super easy to do. So now all I have to do is this. So bam and bam. And then this is going to get to crafting, get our power up and running. And yeah, I'm still working on getting this thing upgraded. I want some power today. So I am definitely having the same issue that I was having in my uh, actual survival world. And it's this issue right here. Um, so you can see the villager kind of put himself on the outside. So all I gotta do is get him back in where he belongs, which may be a little bit more difficult than you think. I gotta kind of push him back in there. And then I have to slab this off. So basically this is gonna get some slabs here. Uh, the slabs are not going to stay here, but we do need to put a slab above the bed there. And same on this side, and I got to do it to the other side as well. And this sort of fixes the issue, or at least I found it fixes the issue. There we go, we cap that off, and we move to the other side. Yes, um, so, other side's exactly the same. We have this, uh, the villager outside of the bounds. I don't really want the villager to be on the outside there. I can grab this one. I was able to grab the other one. Why not this one? Anyways, um, yeah, just basically need to fix that and then should jump back up and start running. It actually won't work if this guy is outside like that. So of course, while upgrading power, power and working with it, um, you're also gonna need to upgrade your rods as you're working on upgrading any type of machine, such as this furnace. Of course, me upgrading this furnace to the next tier is a pretty big boost, but that next tier boost, that's what I'm kind of wanting. And that just requires blaze. It is actually probably one of the easier things to set up. But I do think this one requires the automation. Uh, we're going to find out because this right here, right? It No, it just requires one blaze rod. I think it still does require some sort of automation to keep it going so we can put them in and then kind of forget about it. And I'm going to show you how to set that up. It's actually fairly simple. Um, but we do want to get it going first. Um, so to upgrade, basically we're going to be upgrading these things. Right here, I need some basic version, or actually the bigger versions, which are going to be upgraded here. Uh, I'm going to make eight of them for right now and see if that, see how, how far that gets me. It looks like you can make quite a bit from them. Okay. And then we're going to upgrade this, and then this one, and then this one. Now, upgrading the furnace, that is a little bit different, but this is going to be upgrading to the hardened version. There we go. So this is producing 180 RF per tick. Off of just our blaze rods that we could eventually get set up and have it just immediately flowing in here. Like this is going to generate a lot of power fairly quickly. Um, and this mod, yeah, definitely has the potential to generate a tremendous amount of power. Okay, so I said I was going to show you how to automate this. Let's go ahead and get a comparator. And I have done this actually recently, so this is going to be kind of nice. Um, we grab a comparator. We go ahead and grab a couple of these. I don't know if we're going to need a repeater or not. We are going to need hoppers. I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of hoppers, one for the bottom and top. Basically, we can hopper items in, but it automatically pulls the items out, which is not really what I want to do, right? I don't want to automatically pull the items out. 
For example, if I put a blaze rod in here, let's go ahead and get a blaze. I don't know why I keep going up. I forgot I, I have this at my disposal. So if I put a blaze rod in here, it should go in there and then be deposited out. Or did they fix that? <gasps> oh, it might have been fixed. So it looks like we don't have to automate it. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. So you can see, then it went in. Okay, that <laughs> that is so much easier. So what I can do now is just grab a stack of these and just have them running. Because before there was, yeah, I, I had to do a little bit different of a setup. Um, I basically had to use some redstone, which we might have to do later on. Um, let's see, what are the other stuff from Powa? Um, I don't know if automating this other material is is the same way like this. Does this one require one diamond? It just requires one diamond. So yeah, no, I, I think that was actually something that has been fixed from version to version. Because I remember needing to have all of that stuff put in there first. So I can just throw a stack in here. Oh no, this was the problem. Okay, so as you can see, the blaze rods pile up in there. Oh, that's right. So yes, we still have a solution. We still have a problem to solve. So, this actually gives me a chance to solve that problem. That Now I remember that was the problem that we needed to solve. So we still need the comparator, and we need some redstone for this, and some slabs, I believe, just to sort of move the redstone signal. Um, so, what we want is we want to tell this, uh, hey, hey, we, we don't want all these, these blaze rods in there. We only want one in there. Let's go ahead and pull this out. So... What we're gonna have is a comparator because as soon as there is a rod in there, that sends a signal immediately. Um, we need to get this signal to the hopper. So I think we might, because this is only gonna be sending a signal of one, as you can see, it's a power of one. We are going to need a repeater. So the repeater should be able to get the job done, no problem. So immediately after this, we're gonna run a repeater. And then, it's so weird that they're different color, um, I guess, that's, I, I don't know, I don't know why they're a different color. We're going to run this repeater like this, and we're going to use a slab directly on top. And all we got to do is carry the signal from here to here. Um, and that could be done with a slab. Let's see, this needs to be run to this slab. And make sure that I, actually, this might need to be extended a little bit. You know, we could probably run it up sideways now that I think about it. No, this this setup should work. So we have our comparator here. That's going to boost our signal. We have the redstone go here, and then we travel it up like so, and then just run it over the hopper like that. I know it's very crude looking, but it is basically your idea of vanilla redstone setup for this to work. So what we should be able to do is throw this in there. You can see one happens. And as you can see, it's not dumping anymore. It's only going to allow one in. And then as soon as this one's done, it'll allow the other one to be dumped in. Um, so this is how you're going to set up the automation for this. And of course it can be changed. Um, if you want to allow more items in, say you wanted three blaze rods or you wanted blaze powder, you would just have to adjust how far you, uh, you set this up, how far you set the repeater away from the original um, setup. So this works. Um, or you can use a comparator signal. You could like have the amount of redstone uh, because the lovely mod here, Create, has the ability to do this. You can take an analog lever and you can actually hook that up to the comparator and uh, set the analog level uh, redstone signal and then this would have to meet that redstone signal before it sends a redstone signal. It's a little bit of, of just, you know, mechanics that this does, but just in case you wanted to know how that worked, <laughs> there you go. A uh, little bit of vanilla redstone. Hopefully it wasn't too much. So after letting it run for just a little bit, like we can already harness 400 RF per tick from just this furnace alone by upgrading this. So we're going to be taking this from the basic past the hardened to the blazing, right? And it just needs the hardened, uh, hardened furnace, which is this right here. For some reason, all the other ones work. This one is not taking, it was like not taking the, the ingredient, but... As you can see right here, 400 RF per tick. That's actually kind of crazy. Now, taking it the next step, I was sort of looking at what it's going to take um, to make this produce 900 RF per tick. Uh, really, if we take a look at the next tier uh, of the Niotic, the Niotic is going to require 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 diamonds is all it's going to take in order to upgrade this to 900 RF per tick. Diamonds, right? 19 or 13 diamonds. Literally 13 diamonds is all we need. Now it is going to take a little bit more time than my blaze rods are, but it works in the same setup here. All we got to do is remove these, put the 13 diamonds in there. It's going to take a little bit longer to charge up, um, but these should be able to handle it. It's going to place down our 400 RF per tick. These are going to, of course, get blasted. Now these only, these only output so much. So as you can see right there, they're at the point where I don't know if why they were flashing like that. That was kind of weird, but there we go. So this is going to take 300,000 RF per tick in order to upgrade this to that item. So 13 items and it's flickering for some reason. I think it's because this is I actually don't know why it's flickering. That's kind of weird. Oh, it's the cable. Oh, we got to upgrade the cable. This is hooked to because now this is generating more than that cable can support. So that is going to be another step. Pretty simple fix though. Like this next energy cable, the basic variant should be able to support these guys a hundred percent. Like it should not, it should not have any problems. The basic tier that's 1400 RF that it can transfer. And these should be able to handle it. If not, then of course we can upgrade to the next tier cable. But overall, I think that that should be able to handle it. Looks like it is. So guys, I'd hate to end it here, but of course we are running out of time. Of course, I am going to be getting the rest of that stuff processed up. Uh, but next episode, I think we're to work on getting automation set up for our power. Now that we have the ability to make these generators, might as well utilize them in some form. And then we also need to dive into Batania eventually because Batania just offers so many utilities and uh, I would actually love to get into it. Plus we can start generating ores because even though there's no way of knowing this, <laughs> the uh, the orchid actually is available in this world. Um, usually that is only available in the sky block uh, from Batania, but it is it is craftable, so we can actually make the orchid, which is incredibly powerful for generating resources. Guys, I want to say a huge shout out to, of course, the sponsor of today's video, and that is going to go on to sponsor mass. Let's go ahead and place that if I can. Can I only place this if I'm standing? I think so. I'm going to place it right here. I think that will work out perfectly. Maybe? How how do I how do I place signs now? I I I can't even I can't even place a sign. You know, this is going to be wow. I am stuck holding a sign. <laughs> With all those shenanigans out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and hand type all of this stuff. And uh the today's sponsor is going to be Shifty B HUD. Thank you so much for your amazing support. And I would slap a color on there, but I ran out of my dye earlier. I'll get you a color on there, I promise. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, if you did, be sure to click that subscribe button. Also, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon, you can find that linked down in the description below. I'd really appreciate it. That is one of the better ways to help support this channel and uh, help you know support me in the content that I make. I really do appreciate it. It helps make these episodes a little bit longer and uh, definitely goes a long ways. Uh, guys, if you enjoyed, give it a thumbs up. Guys, I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.